You want a war? You're gonna get one. Hey yo, welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 19th of January 1998, the night after the 1998 Royal Rumble. Tonight Raw comes live from Fresno, California, while Monday Nitro comes live from the New Orleans Superdome in Louisiana. You know the drill by now, watch the Royal Rumble 98 video as soon as possible, I'm not even sure if it'll still be available as I record this video, but get on it ASAP, and if it's already been taken down, you'll find it for free over on Patreon. If you want the quick Raw Rumble summary though, Shawn Michaels is still WWF Champion, Steve Austin won the Raw Rumble match, and our IC and Tag Team Champions remain the same. We have our first jam up couple this week on Reliving the War, say hello to Amy and Justin. Amy and Justin attended the recent NWA shows in St. Louis and not only did they have the best merch in the entire building, but they took photos of those sweet sweet chin locks for us all to enjoy. Careful downloading these into your PC guys in case the cops raid your home. A big Thanks to Amy and Justin, thank you for supporting the channel. Alright, get comfortable and grab your supply, soldier. Let's check out this week's episodes of Raw and Nitro. No messing around this week, our shows start off right away with a Paul Bear promo on Raw and a Rick Martel vs Eddie Guerrero match on Nitro. Paul walks down to the ring on Raw and it looks like he got his money back on the horses and his wife's let him back in the house. He's cleaned up, he's looking very proud of himself and he's got a big old smile on his face. Paul says, I got ya, didn't I, as the crowd chants you suck. Paul says if he does suck then he must be good at it. <laughs> Legend. Paul says he deserves a golden globe for his recent performance and he laughs at how Kane and Taker saluted each other on Raw last week. Paul got us all, hook, line and sinker and Paul got The Undertaker too. Paul says, Raw Rumble's main event was beautiful, Kane chokeslamming Taker into the casket, Taker getting locked up in the casket, the kids crying in the audience as they wondered what was gonna happen, and finally, the inferno that felt so good. The Undertaker's gone and Paul says he'll never return, and just then the lights go out and Taker's music plays in the arena. Druids bring the burnt casket down to the ring, you're waiting for Paul to say break it down, but the casket opens up and Kane emerges. The promo ends with Paul calling Kane the last surviving member of the Undertaker's family, as the devil's favourite demon stands in the middle of the ring. Over on Nitro we have a very interesting matchup, Rick Martel vs Eddie Guerrero, I'm hoping this one's good. Eddie goes on the attack right away and Martel gets his face mangled with Eddie's foot. Guerrero brings it to the corner where Rick counters and Eddie takes a few left hands to the face and Martel pulls off a jumping clothesline as the crowd chant Eddie sucks. If he sucks then he must be good at it. Eddie then scurries away after taking a press slam and this is already going way better than Martel's match last week. Guerrero then gets annoyed when Martel catches him out with two arm drag takedowns and he gets animated when complaining to the referee about hair pulling. Eddie then uses the ref to distract Martel and Rick goes down after a leg drop. The crowd start getting under Eddie's skin as Latino Heat targets the left knee. We see Eddie's signature apron sent on. Martel then takes a back suplex and Rick goes down after another drop kick. The match then ends when Rick dodges a second rope sunset flip attempt from Guerrero and Eddie takes a big old spine buster. Rick holds on and he applies the Quebec crab and Rick Martel makes Eddie Guerrero top out. The crowd absolutely loved this too, not because they were in wide support of Martel but because they wanted to boo Eddie Guerrero. Miles better than Martel's Nitro debut match, a good no nonsense opening bout from Monday Nitro. The commentators then do a brief recap of Thunder's main event, so let's check it out. DDP and Luger vs Nash and Savage DDP got jumped when leaving Nitro last week so he couldn't compete. Leg said he'd be happy enough to go 2 on 1 against these NWO bastards and even when DDP protested and he came to the ring anyway, Hollywood Hogan took him out. 
Savage and Naj couldn't put aside their differences. Macho got a little aggressive when tagging in Naj, and Naj got a little aggressive too, just a little. It all went to shit then as Savage and Naj couldn't get along, and the commentators wondered if Savage was aiming for Naj or Luger when jumping off the top rope. Hollywood Hogan inadvertently kicked the Macho Man, and this leads to the Mega Powers almost exploding for the hundredth time, but the giant then appeared, and Hogan got choke slammed. We get the usual WCW vs NWO brawl afterwards with the Stinger getting involved too, and yeah, there you have it, an absolute mess. All you need to take away from this though is the fact that the Macho Man and Kevin Nash still don't like each other, and it looks like Hogan and Savage are going to have some issues too. Because Jan chokeslammed Hogan on Thunder, it's announced that Hollywood Hogan's going to face the big man in tonight's Nitro main event. Hulk Hogan cuts a promo next on Nitro, and we've also got Marty Jannetty vs Chris Benoit. On Raw, the DOA take on The Nation. Before we sit through another 5 star classic DOA match, D-Generation X cut a promo and Hunter says he proved to the world last night that Owen Hart is nothing but a loser, Owen can't cut it at the big dance, and maybe Owen should pack his bags and head down south too. Hunter then says HBK led The Undertaker to rest last night, and Sean says he tossed and turned all night long because he was guilt ridden about what happened to The Undertaker. Not only did HBK beat the dead man once again on pay per view, but the dead man's casket got set on fire. Sean promises to find The Undertaker tonight on Raw, no stone will be left unturned, and the fans can thank DX when they find the phenom and bring him back to the World Wrestling Federation. The Nation had some problems last night at the Royal Rumble, they didn't work together during the Rumble match and they had no issues beating the hell out of each other. Tonight they have to work together to beat some Biker Michael likers, and I simply can't watch this, we all know how it ends. It's a six man tag here, Kama, Dilo and Farouk represent the nation, and as expected, it ends with a brawl and the referee throws the match out. The Rock and Mark Henry join the fight, it's a 5 on 3 beatdown, so Ahmed Johnson and Ken Shamrock run down to save the day. Kenny Boy Shamrock may have gotten robbed last night of the IC Championship, but Ahmed faces The Rock later on tonight and the title is on the line. On Nitro, Hulk Hogan and Easy e come down to the ring, and Bischoff's got his hands on Sting's bat. Bischoff wants to present the bat to Hogan, and <laughs> yeah, there was no chill back in the 90s, was there? Hogan admits that there's been some tensions within the NWO, but it's all sorted out now. Hulk appreciates Bischoff giving him Sting's bat because if anyone in the NWO decides to step out of line, then Hulk will batter up and beat the shit out of his own comrades. Pretty serious stuff here, guys. Hulk's threat the entire group and this can't be good. Hogan says he's still the world champion and he's a fighting champion, so Hulk has no issues taking on the giant tonight on Nitro, and Hogan's gonna show the fans and Sting that Hulk Hogan is still the man. Hogan says when he gets his title back he'll beat Sting again, Hollywood is just too sweet and that's the end of the promo. It was all the same nonsense here really, but the part about Hogan beating up the NWO if they don't play ball is definitely interesting, let's see where it goes. Next on Nitro we've got a Party Marty vs Chris Benoit match, and the former rocker started things off with a head scissor takedown followed by a super kick. The two then traded chops in the corner, and Benoit went on easy mode with Marty here, no doubt about it. Someone like Lodi a few weeks ago was shown no mercy from Benoit, but Marty must get a pass because he's a veteran. Marty shows off his selling abilities by taking a clothesline and a back elbow. He comes back with a knee lift, but Benoit is quick to bounce back after a suplex counter. Marty then gets thrown to the outside, but he drops Chris over the top rope from the apron, and then Raven shows up on the entranceway along with his flock cronies. Marty taps out to the crippler crossface, and Benoit now has to deal with the flock. Even after Sick Boy's sweet springboard dropkick, Benoit still finds a way to take out every flock member who hits the ring, but then Raven gets inside the ropes and Benoit gets blindsided by Perry Saturn. Marty Jannetty to the rescue guys, Marty fights the flock as Chris gets back to his feet, the crowd pops as Marty performs a plancha on Saturn and Scotty Riggs, and Benoit sends a message to Raven by hitting Lodi with a diving headbutt. You know things are bad when Marty Jannetty's saving your ass. The match itself wasn't too good though, and Benoit definitely held back a little. I was about to wonder why Marty was even brought in during early 1998 because WCW already had a stacked and underutilized roster, but then I remembered WCW needed more guys for the Thunder TV show. 
Mark Merrow vs Tom Brandy happens once again on Raw while Ernest Miller takes on Jerry Flynn on Nitro. A hearse is seen on Raw's war and the commentators believe the Undertaker's inside the vehicle, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Mark Merrow makes his wife wear a robe that says Property of Marvelous Mark Merrow on the back and Merrow gets attacked by Brandy while the Marvelous One was waiting for Sable to disrobe him. Brandy counters a hip toss with a sidewalk slam but his corner charge completely misses as the crowd chants for Sable. Merrow then puts Brandy down with a DDT and then a delivery dude brings Sable some flowers. Sable has no idea who they're from and neither does Merrow. So Mark makes those flowers do the job and he sends Sable to the back. Back inside the ring, Tom Brandy summons his inner Bill Goldberg and Mark goes down after a spear. We see Sable's back at ringside as Tom continues to get the better of Marvelous Mark, but Sable then jumps on the apron and this gives Merrow a chance to hit a low blow. Did she do this on purpose? Who knows and who cares. Merrow pins Brandy after a TKO and if Sable did help her husband intentionally then Merrow sure has a funny way of thanking her. Merrow takes those flowers and he beats the shit out of Brandy, he mouths off off the sable and hopefully this is going to be the end of this Tom Brandy vs Mark Merrow shit because it's going absolutely nowhere. Backstage, Sean and Hunter find the Undertaker's hearse, they approach it quietly and they plan on jumping Taker on the count of three. China opens the door and a bunch of random girls jump out. The girls hug Hunter and HBK and the boys get in the hearse for a ride they won't forget and China isn't too amused. On Nitro, Jerry Lynn with an F takes on Ernest the Cat Miller in a battle for Kung Fu supremacy. Flynn fools the cat by making Ernest think he was an honourable student of the martial arts. Miller delivers a kick of his own back inside the ring but he tries again and he gets caught out with an ankle lock. Miller takes a few more kicks in the corner and Flynn performs the Savio Vega corner wheel kick which doesn't look anywhere near as good as Savio's, I think I said that before. In the crowd chant boring when Miller counters a punch and Flynn gets caught in a cross arm breaker. Miller's body scissor takedown afterwards looks absolutely dreadful and the crowd are now chanting Goldberg as Flynn breaks free. We see a big clothesline from Big Gerald followed by a backhand chop and uh, they're all over the place here as Miller begins his comeback. Miller ends it with his second rope springboard kick and he almost wipes out the referee too. Absolute piss, it's, it's one of the worst Nitro matches I've watched in a while and I'm not just saying that either, Th this was bad. On Nitro, Scott Hall cuts a promo while over on Raw, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie take on <laughs> the Quebecers. No, not the amazing French Canadians. The Quebecers. I've been waiting a fucking long time to say that. Before the Raw match, we see Mike Tyson's dressing room door and Michael Cole says Tyson will be in the ring later on Raw. We then see Shane McMahon and Tyson getting out of the limousine and shit's on tonight boys. So the Quebecers are on Raw and they've got their hands full tonight. Charlie has his chainsaw and Cactus has his baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire and I think I have a fairly good idea who might win this one. Pierre gets thrown into the ring steps by Jack and Jacques and Charlie go to work inside the ring. Terry takes a pie driver almost immediately and he gets his head rammed into the turnbuckles. He even rams himself into the turnbuckles because fuck it, why not? Terry takes so many shots that he ends up walking around in circles before falling on the mat and maybe I got it wrong here. Maybe the amazing, I mean the Quebecers could win this match here. There's nothing Jack can do as Pierre gets tagged in and Funk takes another pile driver. Jacques back in now and just as the Quebecers were about to put Funk away with a spike pile driver, Cactus decides to run in and help out his teammate. After nailing Pierre with a clothesline, Cactus applies the mandible claw to Mike Kyoto and fuck my face, the Quebecers win the match. We get a bit more action after the bell, Terry Funk takes a double stun gun and Foley gets some redemption by sending the Quebecers over the top rope. Funk then pulls off a Vader bomb from the middle rope to the outside, that's pretty awesome, and the Quebecers run away in fear when Cactus grabs his baseball bat. Either way, it doesn't matter, the Quebecers defeated Charlie and Jack. Next stop the WWF Tag Team Titles. On Nitro, Scott Hall conducts his survey and it's one more for the good guys. I kinda wish we kept track of these surveys because I'm not so sure guys, I think the good guys might be winning overall. Scott directs his attention to Larry Sabisco, remember Hall faces Larry, it's sold out later in the week, and Scott says he won the World War 3 Battle Royal and that means Scott gets a title shot at Super Brawl. Scott has important things he needs to attend to, so Scott gives Larry the option of forfeiting the sold out match and just walking away. Scott says Larry was the AWA world champion but Larry's boss was 
was also his father-in-law. Larry was also champion when the AWA went out of business, so that tells us all we need to know. Scott says Larry isn't even the best wrestler slash announcer in WCW, Dusty Rhodes is. And Scott thinks that deep down, Dusty's a little proud of the bad guy for all that he's accomplished since Dusty broke him into the business. Larry says he's not backing down, Hall's got a fight coming this week, and Hall's gonna get sold out in front of the entire New World Order. They've built this one up for quite some time now, and Zabisco was very popular with fans at Starcade, so it's gonna be interesting seeing Larry wrestle again later on in the week. DX continue their search for The Undertaker by questioning the minis about the dead man's whereabouts. Sean has a bad back, he can't stretch down, so he gets China to lift Max Mini up so Max can hear him properly. The mini wrestlers of course have no idea where The Undertaker currently is. We then see Mike Tyson talking a whole lot of shit to the old timers. He's talking about Bob Backlund and Tyson actually was a fan of wrestling growing up by the way. On Raw, we have Jeff Jarrett vs Bradshaw for the NWA North American Championship. On Nitro, Conan and Buff Bagwell take on the Steiner brothers. So Blackjack Bradshaw was looking a little revenge for his tag team partner and unfortunately that didn't happen. The Rock and Roll got involved and they tried to make things difficult for Bradshaw but Big Justin Hawk managed to still come back and hit Jarrett with a powerbomb. Bradshaw said that's it, it's all over, but then Jim Cornette jumped in the ring to cause a distraction. Ricky and Robert then tried to interfere but Bradshaw took care of the NWA World Tag Team Champions. And then Barry Windham got in the ring. Barry went to clothesline Double J but Jarrett ducked out of the way and Bradshaw gets whacked. Jeff Jarrett then pins Bradshaw to win the match. The NWA faction then beat up Bradshaw and Barry Windham gets in and he tells the lads to back the fuck up. But that no good lousy stinking rotten dirty hyena Barry Windham turns his back on Bradshaw and he joins forces with Jim Cornette in the NWA. This was worse than Shawn Michaels breaking up with Marty Jannetty. The NWA faction grows in numbers by adding someone who was hardly featured on Raw in the first place. Absolute magic. On Nitro, Buff Bagwell thinks he's got a better physique than Scotty Steiner. Scotty Steiner though thinks he can beat the shit out of Buff Bagwell and I think that's all that really matters here. Buff gets completely wrecked and he takes a belly to belly suplex. He wants Scott to back up a bit but then Conan comes in. Conan crashes to the mat after a clothesline and Scotty performs a running gorilla press slam on K-Dog. The NWO are getting manhandled by Big Papa Pump and Rick. Well, Rick's still standing on the apron. Buff gets hung up in the tree of woe and Scotty chokes Buff from the outside. Scott then pie faces the referee and even the crowd are like, whoa, what's going on? Scott then slaps Buff around a little, but then the heels are finally able to do some damage when Conan attacks from the apron and Steiner falls to the outside. Watch how Scott fell out of the ring again in slow motion. God damn. Rick helps his brother when Vincent tries to get in a few cheap shots, but back in the ring, Scott still doesn't tag out and he ends up taking Conan's rolling clothesline. Buff gets tagged back in and Scott decides he's still gonna try and take both guys out all by himself and <laughs> he's successful. Rick holds out his hand but Scott won't tag him in. A double clothesline floors both NWO members. Conan takes a belly to belly before Buff gets sent out of the ring. The crowd chants we want Rick as Conan gets caught in the corner and Scotty pulls off the Steiner screwdriver. The match is over. Rick looks pissed off. Scott's too busy having a pose down with Buff Bagwell and Ted DiBiase finally confronts Scott about his recent behaviour. After cussing out his manager, Scott turns away and he stands face to face with brother Rick. Scott then decides to walk away. Big pop a pump, wee tiny balls. It's starting to get spicy ladies and gents and I'm not sure if I'm ready to see the Steiners break up again but well, it's gonna happen soon. Sean tells Hunter in China that The Undertaker is nowhere to be found. HBK's Spanish wasn't so good but the mini wrestlers were no help at all. He left no box unopened inside the hearse. <laughs> but Taker wasn't there either. HBK promised the fans The Undertaker and he just can't find him. Helmsley then notices something in the distance and he's totally speechless. China and Sean notice it too as the lights begin to darken. It looks like the phenom has arrived. So up next we have The Undertaker on Raw while The Giant cuts a promo on Nitro. 
we also have Booker T versus Mortis. The Undertaker appears high above the ring and he slowly gets lowered down as the fans go nuts. The Phenom stays absolutely still as flash bulbs go off all around him, and this would have easily been one of The Undertaker's greatest ever entrances. Only, that's not The Undertaker, it's Shawn Michaels. You have to appreciate the level of trolling going on here. DX looking for The Undertaker all night long, setting up the lights going down during the previous backstage promo, and all for this, HBK to dance around the ring and sell celebrate another victory against the dead man. Absolutely brilliant. Triple H has an apron on that says, sick the cook, sock the cook, sack the oh blow the cook off, got it. And it looks like DX are going to have a good old fashioned barbecue to celebrate The Undertaker getting cooked last night at the Royal Rumble. Hunter says HBK and himself brought along the jumbo wieners, but China here brought along the big stick. Now, that's impressive, don't get me wrong, that's one impressive sausage and it could give even the best of us some sausage envy, but… Oh China, put that little thing away girl, check out the real Big Bratwurst on Alex Wright. Oh, Big Bratwurst. <laughs> I know Alex isn't here again this week but I've missed that bit so much. Hunter wonders if Sean got his cool Undertaker clothes and a fire sale, and HBK wants to know if Hunter and China like their Undertaker rare, medium, or well done, because the Undertaker's done thanks to the Heartbreak Kid. Hunter says he hopes Owen enjoyed his royal stumble last night, but Triple H is gonna throw Owen a bone. He's gonna give him a European title shot next week on Raw, man da boy. Sean slaps his salami as Triple H says the ladies in the arena don't need to ride Space Mountain because it's old, broken down and bleach blonde. If the ladies want to see the stars, Triple H has the rocket if the girls want to ride. My my my. Hunter smacks a sausage across his lips as Sean calls himself still the icon, still the showstopper, still the main event and still the champion. Sean and everyone else knows that the winner of the Raw Rumble is next in line for a title shot and that means Stone Cold Steve Austin vs HBK is gonna happen at Wrestlemania. Sean says Austin's a former tag and former IC champion and there's only one more mountain left for Austin to climb, but not only is HBK on top of that mountain, HBK owns that mountain. Stone Cold's on quite the winning streak but all Stone Cold has to do is ask guys in the locker room and the guys Sean sent down south who the man is. Everyone will tell Austin the same thing, the heartbreak kid lays down for nobody. Good promo here in my opinion and I'm gonna be sad to see Sean go soon. He too's been a main part of reliving the war since the very beginning and while the weeks ahead are very rough for HBK, no one can say he wasn't an entertaining performer inside the ring. We'll cover HBK a bit more as we get closer to Wrestlemania. The Giant gets interviewed by Mean Gene Okerlund and the big man says he heard Hollywood Hogan run his mouth earlier on and he heard Hollywood say he's gonna beat the Giant tonight on Nitro. Giant says he has something for Hogan, it's called the Choke Slam, and uh, <laughs> that's the interview over. Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan walk down to the ring and Nash has a hot coffee, he's also wearing a six shirt too by the way, and he gets right in the Giant's face. Remember, Giant can't touch Nash before it's sold out. Randy Savage then runs down to the ring and Hogan tells Savage to fall in line and back off. Hogan threatens Randy, so Savage listens to his lord and master and he gets out of the ring, only to come back seconds later and push the Hulkster right into Nash. Nash accidentally shoves the giant and all bets are off. The crowd pops as the giant goes to attack Big Sexy, but he gets coffee thrown in his face and Hogan uses Sting's bat to punish the big man. When the stinger shows up, the roof comes off the Superdome and look at this, look at the crowd reactions. This right here gives us an example of why Sting vs Hogan maybe shouldn't have ended at Starcade because it's clear as day that there was more left in the tank. You could argue that the fans would have cheered for Sting here no matter who you went after, and I'm certainly not saying the Starcade ending wasn't bad, but the audience completely lost it here and I don't know, it kinda looks like people might just pay to see Sting vs Hogan again even after all the nonsense in December. Mortis and Booker T come out for their match next, the TV title's on the line and Tony Schiavone announces that from next week Nitro will be a permanent 3 hour show. So that means going forward we'll be looking at an unopposed hour of WCW action every week on Reliving the War. Not that it really matters now anyway. 
Reliving the war aside, three hours of Nitro plus Thunder Saturday night and the WCWC shows meant that World Championship Wrestling had an absolutely ridiculous schedule ahead of them, and Eric Bischoff contributes this as a factor in WCW's eventual downfall. It was way too much in the late 90s and, you know, I think it would have been okay even if Nitro went three hours but Thunder never existed. Thunder would prove to be an absolute headache, especially when they started taping shows in advance after live broadcasts. So yeah, Starcade was bad, but this news right here was also pretty bad. Too much of a good thing. Mortis takes the axe kick pretty early on and Booker stretches Mortis's left arm a bit. Booker then gets pushed in the corner after he applies a full Nelson submission, but Mortis misses an elbow drop, giving Booker T a chance to miss an elbow drop too and then perform the spinneroonie followed by the Harlem sidekick. Booker tries the kick again and he gets his little sucker smashed on the top rope. He tries to come in with a sunset flip but Mortis pulls off an insane Northern Light suplex counter that looked brilliant. Here, watch that again. What you maybe don't want to see again is this next spot right here. Booker gets set on the top rope for a Hurricane Rana and Booker manages to counter with a power bomb. Mortis gets absolutely folded in half and the commentators stop talking and they react in pure shock. Heenan eventually says Mortis is hurt and you can see referee Mickey J panic a little. And even though Mortis gets back up, he's definitely not 100%. Booker ends the match quickly with his sidewalk slam followed by the Harlem hangover. And then Wrath comes down to the ring as Mortis rolls out. Pretty sure this was supposed to be a 2 on 1 beatdown and that's why Rick Martel would show up to even the odds. But Mortis isn't seen again. Booker takes the death penalty before Martel runs down and the heels get out of harm's way. Booker thanks Martel for helping him again and Martel tells Booker he wants that TV title shot, it's sold out this Saturday. Booker says if Martel can work it out with the WCW booking committee, then he's got his match. Ric Flair's got a few things to say next on Monday Nitro while an 8-man tag takes place on Raw. Los Bariquas vs the team of Owen Hart, the Headbangers and Takamichi Noku. That's an odd bunch right there, isn't it? The 8-man tag was very, very standard and it was also pretty short for a match involving so many people at just 3 minutes long. There's nothing to say here really except the Honky Tonk Man provided commentary and everyone got a very brief chance to step inside the ropes before Owen Hart got the tag and the match broke down. Everyone rushed into the ring for a brawl, when it cleared out Owen Hart applied the sharpshooter and Jesus tapped out. After the bout, Owen says he has no idea what Triple H is up to but anytime he gets an opportunity to get his hands on Hunter, Owen will accept. This match was a bit of a letdown, so let's save it. I asked you guys to name this illustrious babyface faction who just wrestled Los Bariquas and you said Nugget Bangers, Heart Bangers, The Fartin' Heart Bangers, Universe Mode 1998, My Faction 2K22, Nugget World Order, Nation of Jobification, International House of Nuggets, Four Dudes with No Attitude, The Cult of No Personality, Bang My Asian Heart, The Moshinoku Hearts, Black Metal Sushi. When did this fraction even happen? They really didn't have anything else for Owen. Chicken McNuggets, Reddit, Shotgun Saturday Nights, Bang Heart Ataka, <laughs> 2022 Crypto Bros, Taka Eclipse of the Heart, The Sex Havers, Taka Motion No Jam, Taka Motion Heart 2, and finally, Taka Michi No Clue What to Do with These Guys. On Nitro, Ric Flair wonders what the fans are going to call the Nature Boy when he beats Bret Hart this week, it's sold out. Flair lies on the mat and he gets in position for the sharpshooter, Flair calls it the Scorpion Deathlock by the way, and just as Flair was about to call himself the best there is, the best there was and the best there ever will be, the hitman interrupts him. Brett says he respects Ric Flair, he respects everything that Flair's ever done. Ric Flair is a credit to the sport and Ric Flair is one of the greatest of all time. But Flair needs to understand something, Brett has wrestled his entire life and he's waited a long time for this moment. Brett isn't here to disrespect Ric Flair, he's not going to disrespect America like he once did, he's not going to disrespect WCW. Brett knew he would have to earn a reputation when he arrived in this company and in essence he has to start his career all over again. Brett has a mission and Brett has a goal. On Saturday he's going to beat the nature boy Ric Flair, it's sold out. If he wants to, Flair can ask Brett to say he's the best there is, the best there was and the best there ever will be week after week, but on Sunday morning Flair's gonna feel those words instead of hearing them. 
Flair says after sold out, one of the two will have to live with the fact that they aren't the best. Flair respects Brett's father and Brett's heritage, but Brett, right now, can't walk around claiming to be the best while Slick Rick's still around. As a matter of fact, Flair gives Brett a chance to say it again to his face. Brett says, don't worry, the words will be ringing in Nature Boy's ear on Sunday morning. What do you guys think? Do you think Brett vs Flair was a good way to begin Brett's run in WCW? Do you think the promos leading up to this at the time were any good? I am looking forward to watching the sold out match again because, in a way, the match has been forgotten about. As a matter of fact, nobody really talks about any Bret Hart matches in WCW except the Goldberg Starcade bout, so it's going to be interesting going back and watching every single match and giving the run another fair and thorough breakdown. The Rock vs Ahmed Johnson's up next on Raw, and on Nitro, Chris Jericho battles Juventud Guerrera. The Nation talked to Mike Tyson just before the IC title match, and what a night The Rock had last night at the Royal Rumble, putting on a great IC title match and also having a great showing in the Rumble match itself. Tonight though, he's got big Ahmed Johnson to deal with, and Ahmed gets his ass completely kicked at the start of the match. Rock destroys Big Johnson, and Ahmed takes a suplex, a body slam, and the people's elbow in no time at all. Rock then stomps on the challenger, and he's making it look very easy, but then Ahmed counters a suplex, and he follows this up with a clothesline. Rock then gets punched out of the ring, and he gets sent into the ring steps. Mark Henry then shows up, and he grabs a chair. Ahmed hits his spine buster, he signals for the part river plunge. Mark smacks Ahmed across the back and then The Rock hits the rock bottom. The Great One retains his IC Championship just like that. Remember around the start of this series, Ahmed was being pushed to the moon? Now look at him, he has to get saved by Ken Shamrock and he celebrates afterwards like he just won the match. No Way Out of Texas is our next pay per view and it features Ahmed's final WWF match. This right here was his last match on Raw's War. On Nitro, Jericho takes on Juventud Guerrera and did Hoovy lose the belt already? Oh, fucking hell. Let's check out Thunder. Y yeah, yeah, he did. Rey Mysterio beat Hoovy to become a three time cruiserweight champion. Chris Jericho defeated Eddie Guerrero on Thunder 2, meaning Jericho's the number one contender and Jericho wrestles Mysterio. It sold out this week. Chris gets monkey flipped across the ring and he shakes Hoovy's hand after the move. I thought he was going to get a cheap shot in here, but no. Hoovy then performs a head scissor takedown and a great looking springboard dropkick. Chris falls out of the ring and Hoovy returns the sportsmanship by holding the ropes open for Jericho. Hoovy then counters a German suplex and Chris finds himself in the corner taking a few hard chops. Hoovy misses a corner charge, but he manages to counter a tornado DDT and Chris almost loses the match after a cradle from Juventud Guerrera. Jericho gets covered again after a diving spinning heel kick, but Hoovy ends up going through the middle ropes and this is the opportunity that Chris was waiting for. He holds the ropes open for Hoovy as Hoovy steps back inside the ring and Jericho kicks him. Chris then performs a spine buster and he applies his lion tamer and Hoovy has no choice but to tap out. Jericho won't release his finishing hold after the bell and George Robinson has to plead with Chris to let go. Chris grabs a mic and he says he didn't realise Hoovy was tapping out and the referee didn't make it clear to Chris either. <laughs> Jericho's a man of integrity and it will never ever happen again. Chris apologises to Hoovy, Hoovy doesn't buy it, so Chris attacks Guerrera and Rey Mysterio has to come down to make the save. Chris gets taken out with a diving head scissors and Mysterio and Hoovy work together to take Chris out. The assisted Hurricane Rana looked great here. Chris has an opportunity for revenge this week it's sold out though, and Jericho vs Mysterio is another match that I'm looking forward to. Cactus Jack such a Mike Tyson fanboy that he's prepared to let the baddest man on the planet hit him with his barbed wire baseball bat. Raw takes a commercial break before Mike can do any damage, and when we come back we see Mike Tyson in DX's locker room, and HBK says Mike would be a perfect fit for DX and maybe Tyson should think about joining the group. Raw's main event this week features the Outlaws defending their tag team titles against the Godwins, Nitro presents Scott Hall vs Lex Luger in the semi main spot. The Outlaws want to show the Godwins that they're on the same page and they're allies, not enemies. So they come down wearing overalls while Billy Gunn pets a little piggy during the entrances. 
Road Dog ruins the outlaw's chances though when he says he and Billy lord themselves to dress just like Henry and Phineas because the outlaws still believe in southern justice, and this makes the Godwins go on offense right away. Billy Gunn gets his overalls ripped off and Phineas throws badass into Road Dog. We then see the most awkward gut wrench suplex in history, and Big Henry O tags in and Billy takes a body slam followed by an elbow drop. Billy needs to tag out as the Godwins start the double team moves and Phineas spits and slops on Gunn like the fucking animal he is. He's an animal! An animal! An animal! Henry pulls off a wheelbarrow suplex and more double team action follows. It's pretty clear here that the Outlaws have absolutely no chance of winning this thing at all, but the Outlaws had a secret weapon all along. The fucking stuffed pig. James passes the plush to Billy Gunn, and Phineas takes the fuzzy little fuck right in the face. Billy wins via pinfall, and it's revealed that the piggy was stuffed with a bricky. The tag titles were on the line here too, by the way. So the outlaws win, and Phineas suffers death via stuffed animal. Scott Hall vs Lex Luger then, another match we have already seen and unfortunately it ends in disqualification, which does give me hope that the Nitro main event may have a clean finish. Luger wrestles his usual match here, shoving Scott away and doing the crab pose, getting suckered in and allowing his opponent to get the upper hand for a while. Lex turns it around though and he gets the crowd going nuts only for Scott to use some underhanded tactics to stay in control of the match. Luger ends up hitting a clothesline, two inverted atomic drops and the bionic forearm. When Scott goes up for the rack, Macho Man Randy Savage shows up and the referee throws the match out. Lex does his best to fight Hall and Savage off but he doesn't get very far. Larry Sabisco runs down and he too gets his ass kicked by the bad guy and the macho man, but Luger grabs a chair and the NWO guys get out of the ring. Absolutely nothing remarkable here at all, and again, the stuff inside the ring was the same as always. Never thought I'd say it, but a Godwin's tag team match on Raw was better than Scott Hall vs Lex Luger, and it's simply because it's the same shit we've been seeing for months now. Hulk Hogan wrestles in the Nitro main event while WWF and boxing fans get to hear what Mike Tyson's big announcement is. Coincidence? I don't think so. Hulk Hogan's now wearing a neck brace and Eric Bischoff has an announcement to make. Because of the actions of the giant, or that big goof as Eric puts it, the real world champion can't participate in tonight's matchup. The giant stepped over the line and he attacked Hogan, and the giant then interrupts the announcement by grabbing Hulk by the neck and suplexing him into the ring. The neck brace comes off and the bell rings to start the match. Hulk gets thrown in the corner and he takes a knife edge chop. A big slap to the chest follows and Hogan takes a corner clothesline as we see Kevin Nash walking around the ringside area. If they do another DQ finish here, I'm awarding this whole series the raw and I'm giving up. Hogan gets choked in the corner with Giant's massive boot and he tumbles out of the ring afterwards. He takes a shit bump at the ring steps and another shit bump at the guardrails. Giant then throws Hogan back in the ring over the top rope and we see a backbreaker from the big man. Complete destruction here from the Giant. Kevin Nash makes all the difference when he distracts the Giant and Hogan can finally go on offense. Hulk doesn't do a whole lot here, kicks, punches, back scratches. Nash holds the Giant while Hulk lays in more punches in the corner and Hulk even bites his opponent. Giant takes a corner clothesline and then Hulk body slams the Giant in the middle of the ring. Hulk signals for the leg drop, we see Hogan's finisher. Randy Anderson begins his count but he stops when he notices the macho man standing on the top rope. Hogan tells Savage to get down while making the mistake of turning his back to his opponent. Giant delivers the choke slam and Giant wins the match via pinfall. The crowd erupted after the three count. The Giant wants to get his hands on Randy Savage but Kevin Nash wants some of the Giant. Nash also wants to put Randy Savage away with a jackknife but Lex Luger's after the Macho Man too. So Lex runs down and he attacks Randy and this is a fucking mess isn't it? The NWO then hit the ring and Macho Man fights alongside his teammates. The Stinger then shows up and he goes right after Hogan. The crowd again pops as the Stinger takes out the Hulkster and Sting goes on to wipe everyone out. Nitro fades out as Lex Luger and the Giant help Sting clear out the ring and Hogan just lost on Nitro Brothers. It's a shame he couldn't do this in his last last two matches. Oh, Lex Luger vs Randy Savage is gonna be an event sold out by the way, yeah, surprise. Vince McMahon's in the ring and he says the biggest announcement in WWF history is about to get made, but first Vince announces Mike Tyson to the ring. 
Tyson walks down, he shakes Vince's hand, McMahon has a shit-eating grin on his face, and Tyson says he's been a wrestling fan for a very long time and he's just happy to be on Raw tonight. Tyson says Bruno Sammartino and Nikolai Volkov are some of his favourites before Vince makes the big announcement. At WrestleMania, on March 29th, Mike Tyson will… we don't hear the rest because Stone Cold shows up. A bunch of WWF officials follow Stone Cold and the ring's now absolutely packed with Tyson's entourage and all these WWF guys. Something's gonna kick off here. But first, our guy here has a sign that has a web URL, a username and a password. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going incognito for this one just in case. Uh, DX.com, it's loading something. You must be over 18 to view. Yeah. Oh, big breakfast. Okay, back to Raw, and Vince McMahon wonders why Austin's here. Stone Cold says he's sick of seeing Mike Tyson shaking hands with all the WWF superstars. So sick that Austin's been in the back throwing up. Austin refuses a handshake. He says he respects what Tyson's accomplished in the boxing world, but when Tyson steps into a WWF ring, he's messing with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that's something you don't do. Austin says he wants a piece of Mike Tyson's ass. Tyson may be the baddest man on the planet, but he's got his little beady eyes locked onto the world's toughest son of a bitch. Austin can beat Tyson any day of the week, twice on Sundays. And Austin says he's not so sure how good Mike's hearing is, but he's got a little sign language for him in case he doesn't understand. And that's when Tyson shoves Austin. Austin manages to do some damage on one of Tyson's people, but the other guys are too busy picking up the $100 bills that fell out of Mike's pockets. Austin has to get restrained as the crowd goes absolutely apeshit, and Vince McMahon screams at Austin that he ruined it. Austin ruined everything. Austin gets brought back up the entranceway, and this was a really, really big deal at the time. This made the news, and this made everyone take notice. After a commercial break, Jim Ross says that was a Sports Center moment that's sure to get replayed on other media outlets. And before Raw fades out, Tyson shouts at Vince that he wants Stone Cold. This bit never gets replayed on documentaries because Tyson drops the F slur here on Austin. Sergeant Slaughter's like, you should have said maggot instead, you maggot. Raw wins Reliving the War this week, another important episode of the WWF's Monday Night Show and a show that would help the WWF get new eyeballs on the product. Mike Tyson's involvement was fantastic, DX searching for The Undertaker was good, the matches may not have been up to par, but from start to end you'll be way more entertained with Raw this week. Raw now has 53 points, Nitro's got 51, and we're still on 13 ties. Mike Tyson's announced appearance, plus the Raw Rumble fallout, secured Raw its first ever 4.0 rating in history, while Nitro scored a 4.5. Just a few weeks ago, this would have been enough for Raw to beat Nitro in NWCW's winning streak, so this must have been quite a confidence booster. WCW and the NWO co-present Sold Out later in the week, and of course, the whole show will get covered on the channel. Watch it ASAP, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. And if you want to see it early and see episodes of Reliving the War early, jump over to Patreon and you'll also be helping me out immensely. On Raw next week, Owen Hart gets his European title shot, the Outlaws battle Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack, and Don King weighs in on this Tyson vs Austin business. Serious business. I hope you come back for more everyone, thank you so so much for watching, and please take care.